you have 10 channel points now. That's how it, that's how we do. Channel points are distributed. So now you've been here. I mean, you could have, you could have been here while I was offline and posted a message into the chat. Someone else, thank you for the follow, Kelly. Calibre X618 with a K for the follow. Welcome to the channel. Hope you enjoy it here. And thank you, Lita underscore K for the follow. Welcome to the channel. Hope you enjoy it here. Let me add you both to the overlay because it's this is how this is how bad a programmer I am. It's not automatic. Now you have three ten points. That's how it works. That is the distribution system for channel points on the Twitch platform. Why would you chat in an offline channel? Well. There are many reasons why you would chat in an offline channel. Offline channel chat time, for example. When I'm offline and I do channel chats, which has exactly happened minus one times. It's fun to. It is extremely fun and also massively unnerving to the streamer to chat in an offline channel. It's like... It's like you're trespassing or breaking the law. You don't know me. <laughs> uh... Um, can I suppress this? Can I suppress this? Hello. If you had a suppressor, you can. Would never do it. Couldn't pay me. <laughs> well, I don't know what to say. My mouth is hanging open. You good, Cameron? Picking up my face? Tracking my face correctly? Yeah, it's um, it's a software thing. Uh, anyway, oh yeah, it's not my software, I didn't make it, so can you get one? Sure, it's VC face, check it out, all options. And it's really funny, sometimes it will, you can show the tracking points, and you can look at them, and it will show your mouth being closed, and then the avatar will just be like, bah, bah, like some kind of cartfish. It's very annoying, but it's free, so what can I complain about? It's free. So I feel like I'm doing something illegal here by setting the world context to self, but it is what it is, I'm afraid. Uh, jump to error node. Well, yes, but... Chupapimonya. I think that's how it goes. No idea what that means. Booster pack? booster pack. Do you know what a booster pack is? Have you ever from have you ever bought a booster pack before? You ever played the Magic the Gathering? MTG booster. There are unstable Unfinity booster packs. No, Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh, okay. Sports cards. I don't do sports cards, I'm afraid. Panini. Modern Horizons. I don't know why the Modern Horizons were sideways booster packs. It really freaks me out. You wanted to do magic? Too much for you. Yeah, magic uh, Magic cards are expensive. But um, some of them aren't expensive. Sealed unlimited booster packs. Open your pack now. Open the pack now. You won't. I will not. We have not reached a threshold. I opened three packs yesterday. And it is very nice. Kaldheim is a good pack. I like Kaldheim. Snowlands. Uh, Viking stuff. Very cool. Double feature. The Innistrad double feature booster box. I have no idea what is in it. But it's black and white. It's not like this is how it looks. I don't know. Is it just all black and white cards inside the booster packs? I want to find out, but at the same time, I don't want to have to buy a whole box to find out. And you do have to buy a whole box to find out. No one is reselling the packs individually. Anyway, uh, that's them. 
how can I suppress warning on blueprint? Is there any way to suppress or ignore blueprint warnings? Functionality is usually not removed, but removed to move to a different name API. Check it's what's it's been, what's it, what's in, in what's it's in, in what's it's in, what's not exactly what you've asked, but maybe this helps. What the fuck? Be right back. Okay. Suppress silly warning caused by the fact that you're using a mix of kinematic and simulated physics types in a fat asset. Which is your simulator set for the root bone, the mesh will be pushed all over the place. Even if you set this rate really high, and mass run the risk of it moving. You cannot have that. So kinematic instantly solves that issue. However, you get an overload of useless warnings. BP name skeletal mesh component SK name is set to simulate physics enabled if you have if you'd like to add impulse. On top of the first area, you also get BP name scale mesh SK name SK root bone name simulate physics enables. You have to add impulse simulation function to the root bone. First of all, no, very much not want to add impulse to the root bone. If I did, probably wouldn't have chosen kinematic. Second, my message log gets inundated with these tested performances toast. Well, yes, I can suppress all warnings and get back to the horse, so to speak, with testing. This in turn breaks other messages I do need to see. When you enable simulate on the object, there's a checkbook option to keep it in place in different access tools, and that makes it ones up present. Not really solutions, but still. Mm. Suppress pop up message after blueprint scan. How to hide lighting need to be rebuilt message now. Compiler warning level three. Doc. Automation nodes. Why is it unsafe? I mean, I know why it's unsafe. Because it doesn't have a world context, it doesn't have a real world context, and it's an object class rather than an actor class, so it can't be in the world, but it's not in the world. Um, oh no. No, that's fine. Um, we just use them as uh, storing uh, some code, uh, some calculations, some variables, basically. This doesn't pop up, by the way, in um, class settings, class defaults. <sighs> Convert function to event. Yeah, I could do that. But it seems like a massive waste. And also, if it's an event rather than a function, we're going to get some weird async stuff going on. I know it. 100% know it. Disable blueprint nodes. What the hell? You love the blueprint? Yeah, it's, it's great. 
makes it so organized. That's not what everyone else says, but it makes it a lot more tangible, easy to uh, easy to code stuff. Auto saving out of date packages. Thank you. Okay, BP skills. Don't think we need that. MDMG fireball. Totally fine. CAPC Eleanor. Very small font. So it doesn't complain when you make one of those. It only complains, I think, in the object. Ah, we can delete this now. This is class settings. This is deprecated, yes. Oh, retrofit with the BP skills object hierarchy. Wow. It's like I knew. It's like I knew what I was going to do. Uh, so we can get rid of the CAC skills. Uh, we can move that to the deprecated folder, I think. CAC skill handler. DEP item handler. Yep. Move that there too. ST skills. Um, what was in ST skills again? Name tech friendly function targeting requirements and MP cost. Yeah, we can get rid of that. It's deprecated too. Uh, hold on. Can I? Do I have to deprecate it here? And then we have a look at the reference viewer. Reference viewer is a great tool, by the way. So these reference this, and this references this. This I don't care about, but this, this is this is not good. Um, the reference viewer is great for seeing what uh, what things are referencing. I can't rename it from here, of course. If I can, um, yeah, I don't want to do that. I want to open, browse the asset, and then we have the player character, right? And then we can. Uh, here we go. Inventory is a map of deprecated SD skills. Uh, actually, can't be a map of deprecated SD skills because they're deprecated. Uh, it can be, however, uh, a BP skills class reference integer map and that's more like it so BP skills as we mentioned earlier uh, deals with both items and magic because it deals with the the activation of an effect from a thing right the only difference is magical items will have an MP requirement which will have to be fulfilled before the casting is initiated Items will have uh, 
an uh, account in the player controller um, which will have to be updated and yeah done done with the things the things with the things so they are the things that we're gonna do Do I have the um, reference for your opening? Oh. So now it's only referenced by a deprecated thing, which is good. That might be cool, actually. Oh, lovely. They they put the things. Editor utility act. How's that? Asset action utility. the one we want and this is going to be um editor utility blueprint deprecate custom event Get selected assets. For each loop. Get asset name. That's a string. Four loop. Zero to get the thing a local variable which is going to be be We'll sell that to two, and then Select node, maybe. Make, make string, make literal string. Value D. E. 
underscore underscore and then we can do D. I think you can right click on those and change the the the, the value directly and then do input from there but whatever. B So what we're going to do is, we're going to get the first three characters of the string array of the object name. And if that is equal to DEP underscore, we're going to do nothing. Um, uh, but if it is unequal to DEP underscore, we're going to... We're going to append dep underscore to the object. A simple thing, a simple thing, but we can therefore batch. We can therefore batch. He made a light in scratch. Nice. Let's check it out. Whoa! It's very performant. That is, that's how rendering works, yo. You can see there's a couple of boxes. And a Coney boy. No, no, it's good. I walked into the cylinder and there is no light. I'm giving you a break, it's nice. I like it. Limits are based on scratch stuff, sure. Ray racing, not ray tracing. Ray tasting. Ray, please, please. No, where's it gone? Ray tracing 3D engine? Oh my days. Stuff on Scratch has gone wild. Fuck ton of ray casts in a circle. Have you thought about doing sphere casts or circle casts instead of ray casts? So put a scaled circle in an extent, and then if you have that, slightly more performant than doing ray casts in a sphere. Slightly. Slightly. A what? So, let me explain. I knew I'd forgotten something. Let's get Photoshop open. Dark mode. So you have a, a scene, right? Like this. It's 2D, so that's already a lot simpler. And you have a point, and you have an occluder, right? And what you're doing is you're making a whole bunch of ray casts, right? Out here like this and where that ray cast occludes right the lights get off and you get a, a cool shadow it's really it's really nice yeah 
but you have to do a whole bunch of raycasts to get that. So instead of doing raycasts, what you can do is um, have a scaling uh, circle from around the player, right? And you can see where that uh, where that interacts with the world the first time. So it'd be like here, right? So from here, I'm not sure exactly where you do it. I think it's half the radius away normal to the impact. So it'd be like you do another circle here and like instead of doing like 50 raycasts here, right? You, you've got two two circles, right? So over here, it's not hitting anything, right? So you can do another one like from the radius away this size and it, it goes off map if that's an occluder or not, I don't know. But it's it saves a lot of time in, in rendering. But if you have two like that, which are unoccluded, then you can do one which is like the double the radius out here, right? You assume you can tell where they touch? You're going insane. <laughs> this is this is why people don't use Scratch as an ostensible programming language. Uh, so completed, if depth is false, uh, then we uh, append. Oh, it's not a, it's not an executable. That's fine. It is append. Rename asset. So now if I were to go to the game content, uh, the combat BP and The deprecated folder, because I know we've got some stuff which do and do not start with dep, right? So this starts with dep. So uh, we can have I done something wrong? I feel like I've done something wrong. Did I run the wrong thing? Call in editor. Is that the one? Oh. 
Oh ah, yeah, scripted asset actions, deprecate asset. There you go. Boom. Did I miss that, or was it just not there? So this shouldn't do anything, as it did not. And this should rename it to dep underscore and volatile. There you go. Perfect. It's exactly what we wanted. And now that, that I don't know why that had to be such a nightmare, but and we need the testing textures, don't we? Right, um, SK Magic, we need to open that again. So the big question is, uh, are we going to have, Ooh. oh yeah, that's better. My chair was reclining, I didn't even notice. Are we going to have a different casting aura for each spell? Or are we going to have a universal casting aura that's unique to each character? I think that would be nicer. So we can store the wind up. Uh, we can store the wind up particle effect on the character and the wind up animation, and that can be triggered in the skill thing. But the activation particle effect. This is getting complicated now. So like, where's, where's Photoshop gone? So there's, there's going to be, you know, here's our friendly PC. Here's our unfriendly PC. So there'll be, you know, things which, you know, are cast here and then just appear on this PC. Bolt of lightning, maybe, in the sky. Yeah. Good. There's things maybe that the the, the player character will throw. And then there's maybe things which will be a beam. Like that. Now I'm not I'm not really so much interested in the actual particle effects animations that are implemented here. I'm more interested in working out what kind of data types that we're going to need to store to affect these if we're going to affect these and also which ones we are going to use because I don't want to make things that don't get used because it's superfluous and I don't want to not make things that I want to use going forward because then I have to go back and do this this again, right? So I think that's I think that's fair, right?
What we really need is like a static switch inside the class. But I don't think we can do that. Hmm, interesting. We could just make a child class, I guess. So, instead of having, you know, good, skill, magic, damage, fireball, right, it won't, there'll be an extra step, right, so it won't, it'll be damage, thrown. And the all the throne all the throne classes will have a reference to a hand scene component a trail Niagara particle system and a bloom, I guess. Niagara particle system. I want a target scene component, right? A target. They don't have to be s. They don't have to be scene components. They could be transforms, actually. Might be. It might be actually a lot easier to have them as transforms instead of scene components. But they 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 gotten. So the target is going to obviously be. The, the 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 zero the axis point of the enemy right obviously and the hand transform is going to be referenced from a scene component right from the target you know what I mean is this too complicated am I over complicating a really simple thing that doesn't need to be this complicated I feel like I am but I'm not seeing a, a, a different a better way to do this. Unless, of course, we had a generic variable. Right? So like, we have an array of skills, right, of BP skills in the actor. The animation class uh, could be an object type of um, animation classes. You know what I mean? I'm sure you all know what I mean. Uh, projectile mesh as well. Oh my god, why does it have to be so hard? <laughs> why didn't I make a 3D interactable game? That's so much easier to make. 
you just do it and it happens with this turn-based stop motion animation garbage you gotta stop and think and stop and do and stop and just stop it's not productive is it, it makes me angry it makes me you know stressed out it's not cool bunch of whole if else statements doesn't make me happy either how would you even implement that <laughs> Dimitri Maximoff Galera new account welcome to the channel hope you enjoy it yeah thank you for the follow <laughs> Welcome back. I'm adding you to the overlay either way. A follow is a follow. Activate is part of PP skills, though. So we'd need a... a particle system thing here. What does activate do though? If we go back to MDMG magic damage activate. It just does the damage. So maybe we have We don't need a trail particle effect. Sorry, you're using a work call, but now you're back. A work call is a work call. You don't, you don't have to apologize. It's good to have you here. Good to have you back. Chilling around. I'm just um, going crazy trying to work out how they, the visuals of the spells are going to go. Not designing the visuals of the spells, but how to how to activate them. Like, we could embed the particle stuff in the spell, and then read it, and then do a whole bunch of ifs on the player controller to see if they can, if, they, if they're doing a thing, if they're doing a throw, if they're doing a... If they're not doing a throw... they're doing a beam where the beams coming from where the beams going hmm 
Mm. Do you know, I feel like... I feel like people will get angry if I put in beam attacks and then it doesn't hit things in a line. But at the same time, it's going to be like wildly circumstantial whether or not that's going to be able to be able to happen, right? Because if you if we go if we just if we just simulate the combat a sec, right? Okay, that that was a bad option, but like we got two two enemies in a line and if we place someone here, right? They could do a beam through both of those two, right? Theor theoretically, we target the back one, right? But I feel like you know, if you did it from here to that back one, you might you might clip the guy in front. I don't know, like with the particle effect. And I feel like the player, for the player experience, they would be very unhappy if they can clip someone with the particle effect of a thing, but not do any damage to them. So maybe we just don't do beams at all. We do thrown magic, thrown. Like projectile magic, fireball, magic missile, and then we do uh, spontaneous stuff like lightning bolts, clouds of fire, stuff that falls basically from the sky or comes from the earth or appears within them. Maybe someone does no beams, who knows? Very see I just I just wanted to like rough it out by doing the fireball, right? By putting a particle effect on the fireball and then seeing it happen. Because it's nice when things in the world interact a little bit more visually, right? It's nice when you throw a fireball rather than a fireball just existing from nowhere and coming off like the screen and hitting them in the side of the head. It's nice to have the actors on the stage do the things, right? And we can do that. It's a video game. It's our. This is this is our. This is what we can do. We can we can a absolutely do the thing, but. Yeah. <sighs> I guess if the magic's only going to be thrown off spontaneous, we can we can put a we could put an int in. Well, uh Um, do I have um, a fireball? Do I really not? Yeah. How many directional burst? Niagara emitter. Demo fire burst.
Streambug, welcome back. Scale color. Oh, we have an alpha, right? Okay. Forces, kill noise force. Forces. Mesh rotation. Vortex force, yes. It's an axis, right? It's the Z axis, right? Let's turn kill noise off for a second. Oh yeah, right. Okay, there's there's definitely a vortex there. Add velocity from point minimum 20, maximum 200. Vector from Kurth.
Ooh, no, no, not z no. Ah, uh, zero one one zero key data zero the alpha scale you're back you got a poggy can I please put up that key what we got going on Uh, that link doesn't work. You know what would be hard to do in sluggish with poor frame rate? Ray traced video game engine? Particle system in Scratch. Noise. There's a vortex, it's the vortex which is doing it, okay, so.
I have come to call you about your car's extended What the fuck? Not a scam, 100% legit. Animation is cool. Thank you. I just want like a basic explosion, but I got I got dragged into the vortex. Oh, there's barely any drag. Extend it. You still have a warranty and they still can't. They still call. Not a scam. Adds a velocity around a vortex axis with an optional pull towards the vortex origin. So if you balance the forces, it should just right around, around itself, but it doesn't seem to want to do that. I'll do it's some basic fire. We can see it's fire. How are we going to do text?
So, like damage text, I would like to have. Oh, tricky. I obviously want the damage text to render onto the screen as a widget, but I don't want it. I don't want it to be on the HUD, right? It needs to be dynamically attached to the things, right? But if you do a widget attached to a thing dynamically, uh, you have a problem because that's not rendered directly to the screen. It's rendered to a plane in front of the thing, so it's subject to post-processing, which I do not want. So maybe we kill one bird at a time. Maybe we'll just use the 2D text renderer. Seems a bit cheap though, using the 2D text renderer. Seems like we could do it better. Three D text renderer, maybe. That might be cool, actually. 3D text renderer. May you ask a dummy question? Yes, please. What is the camera on screen? This, uh, the camera on screen is a uh, an actor in the level, which is the CH combat camera dude. Um, and this is the class uh, which we use to represent the player's view in the game. So if I were to go save the game, save everything that we've done, save everything, and play the game, you'll see that we now inherit the view that that camera had, and uh, we can we can pitch and pan the camera, we can yawn, yawn, roll. We can't actually roll. But, um, the camera is uh, attached to an actor so that we have a two-dimensional control with the wasad. So if you connect it to a figure on the board, will you track that perspective? I mean, we could, uh, but we don't. So these are just um, 3D, 3D models, right? Just meshes absent of any kind of real um, logic or anything. Um, so the cam we, we'd have to have a camera on them. They don't. They don't currently have a camera. So that's so much damage, though. So yeah, to see the character perspective, you'd need to add a camera to each of the characters, and then you'd need to have a camera switcher, or you could have a camera actor manager, which would manage the position of the camera, and you could update it to be either, you know, po pointing out of the viewport of any one of those models. But of course, if you were pointing from the inside of those models, you'd also have to hide the model itself, and there's hoops you have to jump through to do the kind of the interesting stuff, uh, like uh, possessing a, a thing. But uh, they're useful to have around uh, as a gameplay object, rather than just relying on the default one. And then the next stage after just relying on uh, an actor with a camera attached to it would be using a camera uh, actor manager, which uh, is previewed in the ALS, but it's a, it's a fairly robust system of um, managing cameras in the scene. You can switch between a bunch of cameras, and you, can ha you have a much finer control over the uh, the, the camera properties as you're navigating through the game. Although this game doesn't really need that, it's gonna have to. It's gonna have it. Oh god, what a nightmare! It's gonna have it uh, because it has to. Uh, what I was doing is the SK magic. So, what did I say? We were gonna have a switch between. We're gonna have a switch between if the thing was a throne, a throne spell, or a a non a non throne spell. Uh, 
I guess that could just be a boolean then. It doesn't have to be an int, really. An int would be extensible, or a, a, an enumerator would be extensible if I wanted different kinds of spells, but we've already kind of ruled beams out, haven't we? Did we rule beams out? Did I say beams? I said beams would be cool, but I said also beams would be annoying for the player. Ay, ay, ay. Um... Uh, act to class reference and um, so by using a projectile actor rather than just a straight up um, uh, a straight up particle system is that the, uh, the actor can be a mesh um, the actor could technically be anything <laughs> which is silly um the pop again. What pop? There's no pop. There's no. There's. N there's no pops. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> so on the actor itself, we don't need to set up um, a trail particle system and uh, a, a, another another particle system or a glow particle system or a projectile particle system. We just have an actor. That can all be in the actor. That that can be a mesh, that can have a glow, that can have a trail, it can have as many particles as you want or as few particles as you need. So like for a Molotov cocktail, you don't really need a trail particle system, but you do need like a, a fire out the top. And it does need a mesh. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then we need a then we need the particle effect to play when it hits. So this is gonna be what incident particle effect. Effect. system which is going to be a Niagara 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 the Niagara system class reference So if we would go to MDMG Fireball, uh, we have Effect System. Uh, NS. Okay, not a Niagara system. Niagara system. Come on, man. Don't do this to me. Do not. Hmm. 
on BB skills. Where was I? SK magic, right? Not a component. That should be that should be fine, right? I don't get why it doesn't work. So I can't. Oh, do you know what? One thing that I haven't done. There should be a whole bunch of Niagara systems out there. Uh, we haven't actually set the bounds, so. No, that wasn't it. Uh, so I've got it selected. We're going to go to MDMG. And we're going to use selected asset. How dare you? See, this works. There's a projectile actor class. I can get anything. I can get any kind of class I want. Library visibility unexposed. Does anyone want my ice cream? Here we go. such a clean animation it's just some it's just some discs flying around it's, it's nothing really nothing special the real the real problem is I can't access it <laughs> that's the real problem it won't let me it won't let me access SK magic object types
if I change it to a particle system, that only ever wants to set it to particle system. Ah, Niagara Actor. Let's try that one. Very angry about this. Ah, okay, so now we have access. Mm. Now we have access to specific Niagara systems. Emma Fabus. Projectile actor. Right, okay, so a Niagara system as an asset is an object, which is confusing because, okay, so here's how it works, right? Um, so this right here is animation actor dummy imp, right? Which is an actor class, right? This is the object of the class AA dummy imp, right? So we can have two of them, right? And these are both objects of the class AA dummy imp, right? And you can have multiple Niagara systems, right? If I drag one in, you can see there it exists in the world for a while. And um, we can duplicate it and there will be two, right? Do I need Niagara actor and not Niagara system? We'll find out. Very shortly, I'm sure. But they aren't classed as different classes. So a Niagara animation is not a child class object of the Niagara. You're excited. I'm <laughs> Whew. This is this is the nightmare zone, really. It's whether or not I'm gonna be able to call this from the object class, because I think maybe there's too much abstraction between object and Niagara actor to do anything like that. So um, let me just go real quick into PC VGRPG. No, uh, CA play character. Magic item in, right? So um, get
what is that? It's a BP skills object reference, right? So cast to uh SK magic as SK magic. Didn't leave myself a lot of room to do this, did I? Go on, get out of the way. This is this is important stuff. Get effect system get trans get actual transform play spawn system at location Theoretically, this works. The it compiled, which is a miracle, if you ask me. Uh, but it's always Eleanor's turn first, and she only knows Fireball. It did not spawn a particle system. How come? Because um, I rigged the system. It's just... Um... Yeah, I know. It didn't. It did not work, as you see. There is no particle system being created, and we did that right. Fireball. Fireball, NS, Demo Fire Burst. Right there. I know what it is. I know what it is. I know what it. I know what it is. I know what it is because it doesn't exist anymore. That's why. Um. So. <sighs> this is so messy. Please ignore the mess for a brief moment. Particle. Particle. Ah, oh, loading the project. Playing the project. That's actually pretty that's actually pretty wild. Look at that! Look at that. One day stream bug will be a more powerful coder than any of us. Uh, right, yeah, so I'm doing it in the wrong order. So we've technically already killed the skeleton before we're trying to spawn the particle effect, which is why it's not working. But if we spawn the particle effect and then kill the skeleton, no problem, right? 
No problem at all. Fireball. Boosh! I am the king of programming video games. You all bow down to my majesty. There we go. <laughs> Ooh, something went wrong. Yeah, whoops. Now time to conquer the next step. Python. You cannot you can't stop me. Uh why can't I why can't I scroll? Hello? Why can't I why can I not scroll? What is going on? Help. 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 I've got a targeting radical up. I don't know why. Here we go. Access non trying to read class property func get array item. Event graph. Execute UMG magic menu. Magic menu. Access non trying to read property chosen skill onto targeting event graph. Event graph. Uber graph. CA play character. Play character. Okay. That's fine. That's just because the person that I selected maybe to cast a spell didn't have any spells to cast and therefore the menu freaked out. Dare you to code a sprite to move in all eight directions in Scratch and then you will see my pain. Yes. That's actually quite a big fireball, isn't it? I mean, I, I don't know if you've seen my pain here, but I had to make this. I had to make all this. You know? That's a really big fireball. That's far too big. Um, but yes, that is exactly what I wanted it to do. So we are one step closer to having cool looking attacks as well as cool working attacks. Um, so I'm going to go grab a drink real quick. Um, and, then, and then I will have drinks. So... I'm late because the dog asked to go out the da down into the garden area. I obliged. She did nothing. She just stood outside. Ten minutes just looking at things like, boy, isn't it nice to be outside? Granted, you know, the first seven minutes of that were fine because I was brewing tea. And then I was trying to get her back inside, so I figured... A reward, maybe? She's molting, so I went, gave her a little bit of a brush, and she, she did not like that. She usually does. I mean, she liked it, but she ran away very quickly. She demanded payment for, the, for being brushed. And then I come back in, I lock the door, I give her payment for being brushed, being a good dog, and I go to leave, she scratches at the door again, and so I had to let her out again. She's very indecisive, especially in that one. Anyway, I'm back. Um, she's fine. She's just fidgeting because no one else is around. She refuses to come upstairs, though, which is also weird. Usually, she likes to come upstairs and, you know, spread out. But not today. Anyway, video game. I just want to. I just want to play the game again. I want to see that fireball animation go off a couple more times. It is very instant, and I don't know where that haze comes from, by the way. There's like a cheeky haze on the screen. I think it might be... Um... Can I target that far away? I think it might be from... Um... Just the translucency of the particles. Kind of worked out quite nice though, huh? It's very big though. Let's, before I do anything, let's just make it a little bit smaller. Uh, burst instantaneous. Spawn count a thousand, that's not the one. 
initialized particle velocity from point. Uh, so we'll make that 25 to 150. That'll keep everything a little bit tighter together. Increase the drag to like five. We can just preview this, right? We can just drag we can just drag the system into the scene and it will play, right? Just drag the system into the scene, right, and it'll play, right? Oh my god. We can crash the engine by dragging it into the scene far too many times. Whoopsie. Hey! Unhandled exception, exception access violation, reading address, OX, FF, 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 which is a 64 bit binary memory access identifier for the last position in memory, maybe? Or the last position in a chunk of memory, maybe? I don't know. We'll never find out. Let's just reboot and see if we lost anything. I don't think we would have lost anything. I think everything was saved. The only thing I was messing around with was the particle system. It was saved as well, so... Fingers crossed. We'll be fine. I also spent some time uh, after the stream yesterday sorting out cards because Visual Studio had an update. And uh, not updating Visual Studio but working on the C++ project is illegal. Uh, apparently. Without audio, lots of love. Watching Stranger Things 4. You enjoy Stranger Things 4, Clever. Welcome. It's nice to have an extra lurker on the stream. Thank you. And I will get the hand crank out. Thanks to you. Thanks to you. You unmuted just for a moment. <laughs> Hi, science. Yes. It's so nice to see people having fun getting along. It's your anniversary today? Congratulations. Seven years is, is a very long time. Not gonna open all those asset editors. I am gonna find out if I placed the particle system in the level O, which does not look like I did, which is fine. There you go. It is still quite large. Please tune out. Please feel free to tune out. And please enjoy Stranger Things. I haven't seen it yet, so no spoilers, but enjoy it. From point twenty five to seventy five. Oh, we can constrain it to a radius. Cute. It's a little bit more reasonable, but I think it's the vortex force. I want it to spin more than it is spinning, and I want it to 
maybe curl less than it's curling. That's nice. What if we do the Vortex Force before the Curl Noise? Go on then. Full screen the lad. Let's see how, how, it, how it performs with the old slightly smaller fireball. <laughs> Crazy. Amazing bee hop. All right. Welcome. What is up? That is the question. For all time. Voxel style game, yeah, voxel style game. It is only voxel style though, we're not using a voxel renderer. So anyone getting excited about real maths, uh, unfortunately you can get unexcited real quick as well. They are just 3D meshes. Um, I don't like the curl noise to be honest with you. Where the maths, no maths, absolutely 0%. Show me the maths, yeah. Curl noise force. Like we'll make it one hundred, and we'll sample it one hundred. Oh, hey, hey, hey. That could work. Radius constraint does not make me happy. How do you accidentally become an indie game dev? Well, um, by accident, mostly.
Little Drano official. Thank you for the follow. Welcome to the channel. I hope you enjoy here. Let me add you to the overlay. See, I don't like the fact that it's an acceleration outwards. I want it to just spin. I don't want it to force out, right? Vortex pull amount. 20, 20k, why not? So that looks okay. Ten, what about 10k? Do you do the models too? I do the models. I don't really model. Oi, oi, oi. <laughs> My goodness gracious me. So I should probably show you the model, shouldn't I? Like working. I do not enjoy this. What the hell's going on? Invert that fall off. Be cool if I could visualize this with like a 3D mask or something. Well, Drano official, what am I making? How long have I been working on the project? Yes, I've been working on the project for a while. Um, that's actually that's actually pretty cool. Been working on the project since about uh, no, I can't remember. Maybe like nine months, ten months. I don't feel like it's been a full year yet, but it probably has been more than a year. Um, I'm making a voxel graphic J flavor RPG game about uh, a demon. That one on the end. And this is the combat. I'll show you the combat because I'm here and I've just done spells which can have some cool particle effect. Which is nice. Um, the combat system is what I've been working on for the the longest time, I think, since before the dark times. Uh, but that's the combat system. Uh, but if I open up maybe my original test level, you can see the world show you the code. Yep. Well, I, I do it all live on stream. So, you know, turn up five hours a day, two days a week, and you'll learn all the code. You'll be able to do it yourself for free. Uh, so this is the... This is the test world for the locomotion settings for the overworld navigation. Um, I don't know what I changed, but it's it's saving. And we can play this too. And it's going to definitely lag my PC and the stream, so enjoy that. But uh, otherwise, it's a fairly fairly normal game. You, just, you walk around the map, you can, you can zoom in a little bit. You can go up and down ladders, you can open doors, you can walk through the NPC and get stuck. That's a problem that needs fixing as well. So you've got a little door here that you can walk through. You can come into this room. The room's got a carpet. The room looks very nice. The room's got a lamp in it and some outdoor lighting there. Little skelly boy. Is this RuneScape? This is this is far beyond RuneScape. So we've got some glowy eyes going on. We've got a skeleton. Got the fact that I can't actually see the door anymore, so I'm probably not going to be able to escape this zone. There it is. 
Uh, it's just because the fall off of the antenna light's quite low, so it doesn't peek through the door or anything. It doesn't actually light up the full room. It's for performance more than anything. This is the, the lights room, where there are some lights. And then we have the particle effect room, where there are some particle effects. Just the one particle effect, actually. Do I have any background in game dev, or am I doing this teaching as myself as I go? I'm doing all this teaching of myself as I go. So we can climb up this ladder here. And we can traverse some cobbles on the roof. I have no background in game dev, I'm afraid. I'm a, I'm a baby noob. I, I took CS50X and I dropped out after week 12 uh, when they were doing data recovery for uh, images, doing the scaling stuff. Uh, so yeah, you get to walk around, you get to go upstairs, up downstairs, up down ladders. Um, that's Cecil from Final Fantasy IV over there. I don't know. I don't know why he's still here, but he's here. He won't be in the final product, <laughs> as as you may have imagined. He is someone else's IP. You can turn the camera upside down if you want to, which inverts the controls. Believe it or not, and there you go. That's that's pretty much the game as I have it. There's not a lot to it. Oh, I think we can talk to the NPC as well. Let's go talk to the NPC. So I decided, I think I started, I think I started this project the day Unreal Engine 5 early access launched of public, public beta. And that was a good thing and a bad thing. So it allowed me to use the Unreal Engine 5 to develop, you know, the, the core of the game. But it also meant that I was doing naughty things like using an unbuilt untested product that they said do not do main project development with this because it's unbuilt untested and I was just I just ignored that warning completely which meant that I actually bricked the project recently uh, moving from Unreal Engine early access to Unreal Engine 5.0.0 um, so I took I took a few weeks off and I developed a pinball game in, in the interim and that was fun and uh, yeah there you go yes T yes upside down cami yep correct See, I'm working on the combat right now. It's awesome. You think about trying to learn UE5 messing around. UE5, good good engine to start on. Definitely definitely a baby beginner engine for baby beginner programmers like me. Uh, but it's also fully extensible to the entire C++ library of, of whatever you want to do. So it's it's basically Unreal Engine is the best game engine ever, and you should never use any other engine. That's my opinion. Um, but yeah, you know, there's there's other engines. If you didn't if you didn't want to use Epic's cool tool, considering going indie at some point in your life, yeah. I mean, I'd 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 probably recommend getting a publisher and a boys at risky. Well, I have a I have a day job, and I also, as you can as you can tell, I can I stream to Twitch as well. I have the I have both buttons, you know, follow and subscribe. Um, but you know. Day job pays the bills, and then I make the games in the evenings, on the weekends. It's technically not weekends. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday stream, but yeah, same thing. Tell you what is risky: uh, not using source control. Don't do that. Please use source control. Please don't be a. Please don't be a, a, a person like me. Pretty much the same as you. Yeah. So, obviously, don't quit. Don't quit. Zero experience in code, game dev, lol, I am a nubia. That's fair. You will need experience in code somehow. The fact that you say it. The fact that you say it. So I learned on CS50X a lot about the C language, the C programming language, which is very nice. I like C. You know, in main void. In main void. Printf. C sharp. No, 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 C. C sharp is greater than C. No, 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 no
Look, if your programming language isn't as, isn't toxic enough to make you allocate memory specifically to instantiate a class, mm -mm, it's not good. <laughs> can you inline can you inline assembly in C sharp? I like, I don't know anything about C sharp. I'm I'm genuinely asking. I'm not being I'm not being a dick. But like, that's something that you can get in a as a performance boost if your compiler is is a, a nugget brain like some compilers are, and you want to do a specific thing with the bytes, you can inline, you can just inline some, some assembly in C. And it's fine. Nobody cares. Compilers just like, oh, well, they're the instructions you wanted. They're the instructions you get, even if it's bad, right? Which is, I guess, one of the downsides to using C. You have to know what's good to know what's good. C sharp, never touched it. C++, I have touched C++ with a stick. You can, but you should not. I mean, it depends what you're doing. Lil Drano official, thank you for the prime sub. Oh my god, oh my days. Thank you. It's big support for the channel. Let me let me open a booster pack for you. That is what we do here. We get a sub, we open a booster pack. And I've had far too many subs in the last couple of days. It's making me worry. It's, it really is making me worry. I only have three left. Please, nobody sub until next month now. <laughs> I'm kidding. Okay, so ignore my horrible desk. Uh, we're gonna open up a uh, Innistrad Midnight Hunt. Beautiful. It's the last Innistrad collector booster I have. You've tried almost all languages, and C Sharp is top of your list. Okay, that's good. If you're already good at C Sharp, you might want to try Unity instead of Unreal because Unreal is C plus uh, plus. Unity is is entirely based in C Sharp, as I understand. Rust is also quite nice. I've heard good things about Rust. It's like, it's a C++-like uh, coding language, right? Where you don't have to do any memory instantiation, which is the main pog. It has dynamic, uh, automatic memory management, but you can you can code basically as if it was C++. We have Jack-O-Lantern. Uh, sacrifice Jack-O-Lantern, exile up to two target cards from a graveyard, draw a card, exile Jack-O-Lantern from your graveyard, add one mana of any color. That's pretty nice. Bat Whisperer, we got one of those yesterday. It's, just, it's, a, it's a repeat. Bat Whisper enters the battlefield. If an opponent lost life this turn, create a 1 1 black creature token with fly. Cute. Geist Wave. Yes. Very cool artwork on the Geist Wave. It's like a, a beam cannon. Return not target non land permanent to its owner's hand. If you control that permanent, draw a card. We got a Shady Traveler. I do not have this one yet. I mean, I do. I've, I've, I've got a whole bunch of Shady Travelers, but I don't have this art in shiny. So this is. That's very poggy. Menace cannot be blocked except by two creatures or more. Daybound. And then we have Nightbound, the stalking predator. I love this camera, by the way. I love I love where it where it focuses. We got Play with Fire, which I have not seen before. Um, play with fire deals two damage to any target. If a player is dealt damage this way, scry one. Vengeful Stranger. Vengeful Stranger can't block. When Vengeful Stranger dies, return it to the battlefield transformed under your control, attached to a target creature or planeswalker an opponent controls. Strangling Grasp. Oh my days. Enchant creature or planeswalker opponent controls at the beginning of your upkeep step. Enchanted plane permit. Enchanted permanence controller sacrifices a non-land permanent and loses one life. Wow. Got ourselves a full art shiny swamp. Very nice. Very cool. We got Tovola, the Die Overlord. Legendary creature human werewolf. Whenever a wolf or a werewolf you control these combat damage to play, draw a card at the beginning of your upkeep. If you control three or more wolves and or werewolves, it becomes night and transform any number of human werewolves you control. They don't. Am I from the UK? I am from the UK. These these card packs cost me many pound. Tovola, the Midnight Scourge. Whenever Wolf Wolf you control deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. Tiger Wolf or Werewolf gets X zero and gains trample to the end of turn nightbound. Very nice. Cleaver Scabe. Don't have one of these yet. Cheeky little zombie lad. Um Sacrifice another zombie. Create two tokens that are copies of the sacrificed creature all my days. Wake to slaughter. 
Choose up to two target creatures, creature cards in your graveyard. An opponent chooses one of them. Return that card to your hand. Return the other to the battlefield under your control. Gains haste. Exile at the beginning of the next step. Flashback. Well, we got some of the cool uh, artworks. Tylus Hauler. Bird Admirer. These these are these are both double sided. I have many of these already. Wing Shredder. We got Slogurk, the Overslime. Again, I already have this. So it's a very cool card, though. Legendary Ooze Trample. Whenever a land card is put in your graveyard from anywhere, put a 1 1 counter on Slogurk, the Overslime. Remove three 1 1 counters and return it to its owner's hand. And Slogurk leaves the battlefield. Return up to three target land cards from your graveyard to your hand. Tavern Ruffian, Ruffian, shiny. Very cool. It's a cool looking card. It's not very good. It's just day it's just a day bound 2-5 with we'll transform to Ta Tavern's Magic. Enduring Angel. Woo! I'm dropping him. I'm dropping him. My goodness gracious me. Amazing B Hop, thank you for the follow. Welcome to the channel. I hope you enjoy, yeah. My goodness. Uh Flying Double Strike, you have hexproof. If your total life would be reduced to zero or less, instead transform Enduring Angel and your life total becomes three. Then, if Enduring Angel didn't transform this way, you lose the game. Oof. Wait, what? Flying, you have Hexproof. Angelic Enforcer's power and toughness are equal to your life total, and Angelic Enforcer attacks double your life total. <gasps> what the f- what the f- Oh, it's Mythic Rare. Oh, I see. It's actually a good card. <laughs> If your life total would be reduced to zero or less, instead transform Enduring Angel and your life total becomes three. Then if Enduring Angel didn't transform this way, you lose the game. What? I don't get it. I don't get how... I don't get it why it has that extra rule. Obviously there's a reason for it. And we got ourselves a human bird token. Very nice. Thank you very much. Uh, let me add, let me add the lad to the overlay as well. So I have the dumb overlay because I'm a baby coder. Are you kidding me? That many followers? Thank you. Thank you so much. Put these away. And uh, continue with the this whatever I was doing. Um, so I'm gonna prototype. I'll do um. Uh, combat BP. Dummy classes. Uh, character, combat actor, player character. That's what I want. What do I use for creating the models? I create the models in a free voxel modeling program called Magic of Voxel. Uh, it was made by the Epic Coder F Tracy. can follow F Tracy on Twitter. I'm sure they'd appreciate that. Or you could download Magic or Voxel. They have another one as well, a, a Voxel rendering uh, software for a Voxel 3D and also non-Voxel 3D. I think they do, they have I think they have a parametric 3D modeling tool as well. Um not sure though. I can't remember. Visual scripting is crazy to you. Uh, cool. Yeah, yeah, it's it is pretty off the hook. You don't understand how people can keep it neat. 
Uh, mostly they can't. That's, <laughs> that's the pain, that's the issue. So I have event magic item target here. You like visual scripting for shaders, that's about it. Have you seen some of the shaders out there with visual scripting? It is not cool. It's not friendly at all. Like especially landscape shaders. They are some of the ugliest things I've ever seen. Uh I'm going to do it. Right, okay. So the first thing I'm going to do first thing I'm going to do is rename this. Uh, apparently I'm not going to rename it. Event magic item target. Can I not rename it? Can't rename it, huh? I can rename that. Nice. Proxy talk. Oh, is this um inherited? Target is combat actor, right, okay. It's it's inherited, right? That's that's why I can't do it. Because uh, it comes from here. That is... That is a thing, graph. Here we go. Magic item attempt. So it's going to be magic skill attempt. If I can spell skill correctly. And magic skill target. Where are they? Just changing names, nothing, nothing special just so that we have a handle on what is actually happening, right? All right, so magic skill attempt, magic skill target, At a custom event, this is going to be item attempt. And it has two inputs, which are target actor, which is an act object reference, and magic skill in, which is BP. BP skills object reference. Item. And then we have a 
Podcast FM. Item target. Oh, hello. There we go. That's still, that's still, uh, Event item target I think we just copy all this, that's exactly the same, right? Not that. So that is, we're setting up and we're de-setting up the interface with the uh, global call. Global unbind from mouse click. Uh, proxy is local to this, huh? Right, okay, so. Very nice. So I'm going to move this to the side because it's huge. That's what she said. No one? Not a single person? Come on. I'm going to move this. What is this? Event talk attempt. End conversation. Find event to conversation over. Right. even is that
magic skill attempt. So this is item attempt. Huh? Uh. So it looks the same up to there, but it actually, they, they'll do different things eventually. I'm just going to move that. Underneath. The comment there, so I can comment this. And this is deregister event calls from it's a, is it an interface? It's not an interface. It's a event dispatcher. Uh, rose pink, maybe. Come to think of it, could turn time, defense, and, and other uh, uh, turn uh, other stat bonuses buffs be just a single number? No, 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 they can't. Sorry, whoops. What was I thinking? Because then they'd need an activator to remove them once they'd been completed in their in their activation arc. Ignore me. Ignore me. It works correctly. I got that stupid song stuck in my head now. Thanks, Arc Software.
Uh, is that possible? Hold on, I just thought of something. Like, you know... Okay, that's weird. Um, Yeah, that's where it happens. How'd you, um... Because the thing you can do, right? Is it here? No? Ah, add call to parent function, right there. And then we can, Get calculated damage multiplied by
Hop Have I disconnected? Do I have no internets? That's not good. Uh... That's not good at all. Uh-oh. What am I gonna do with no internet? What am I gonna do with no It says I have internet here. It says I have internet in my adapter, so this is interesting. I guess I'll just tough it out until I reconnect or something. So, uh, what's new in the no internet lands, huh? Interesting. It still says I have internet. And yet, here we are. In the no internet land. It says I have internet right there. Troubleshoot the problems, dude. Troubleshoot my problems! Reeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeee
OBS, do you want to... Do you need a timeout, OBS? OBS, did you get a little bit stressed out there? OBS, do you want a cookie? I'll give you a cookie if you would. OBS, please. OBS. I have to frown so hard to get the frowny face to come out. You have no idea. Like OBS says I'm streaming, but Twitch says otherwise. There I am. Okay, we're back, we're back. That was all captured in the recording. OBS did not, does not quit easy. Boy, did it quit hard. I'm here. P. Sorry about that brief interruption to service. Um, I think we're back. <laughs> So, um, I did this, right? So, okay. Deep breath. Ready to make a clip. Worthy of being clipped, actually. Helpful suggestion to the Unreal Engine developer. If you need a call to the parent function, right-click on the event, and it's just underneath break node links. Add call to parent function, and you will add the, this the parent call to the parent function and it will be accessible to you and you will rejoice but this uh this is interesting because we can extend the damage uh the the damage spell right you can close we can extend the damage spell to heal as well um so if we go if we go put that on dracula junior real quick um, combat BP, dummy classes, CAEC, CAPC, Dracula, uh, we can, uh, we can skills array, we can give him a skill, drink blood. Um, I realize I did not give drink blood a particle effect. Uh, we'll just have to make one real quick. I'm sorry. Scale color. Scale RGB. No G, no B. Sp 
spawn rate 900 900 oops it's kind of ridiculous but you get the idea I'm not not in love with the actual particle it's using it's using the additive uh, sprite renderer do we have um Does not look like we do. It's fine. It's fine. So we understand that the um the finished thing will be will be different, right? The theoretically. Uh, we got a print string there, so Text color is going to be red for damage, right? And text color is going to be green for healing, right? So it's Dracula that has the skill, okay? So remember that. Eleanor can still cast... Sheesh! Freeze your PC. Excellent. Um... Very good. There's been an update to the Kickstarter. Onyx and Yin Yang colors have been introduced. Bro, does that mean I can get...
It's a black keyboard with white keycaps. Ooh, don't tempt me. Gemini hybrid joystick controller. Is that is that a is that a Namco Encon? Controller, the one with the twist in the middle. I think a silver keyboard with black keycaps, that'd look pretty sick. That would look pretty cool, in my opinion. I don't know if there's any information here that you can see. That one? That looks pretty cool, right? Whoo! Don't want to open any of the asset editors. We'll just play in we'll just play in the small window for now. It's fine. Don't don't worry about it, game. Don't worry about it, engine my lad. My lad, my engine, my lad. Fireball is still still castable by the Eleanor. Did some damage. And then I think Dracula will be the next in line to do some slaps. Yeah, Dracula. So this should have populated the spells list with... Very interesting. Doesn't have a friendly name. Excellent choice. Um, there you go. It did 250 damage. And it healed 50. Awesome. CAP Sally Eleanor 3. And we can't cast it because there's no valid targets left. That's fine. So it works. And we've created a, an ostensible and extensible system for making cool skills. I think the particle system needs a little bit of a refinement. Um, if you ask me, it's not very elegant in the way that it deals with uh, the particles itself. Uh, but... Uh, We can we can work on we can work on that. So actually, thrown and absorbed are going to be the same thing, uh, except for backwards. So we can we can do that. Uh I'll make an enum in the skills. Um, another enum, yeah, I know. Blueprints, enumeration. This is going to be E N. Skill, animation, type. Uh, add a numerator. So this is going to be uh, spontaneous. description uh, spell or skill effects that require no travel between actors add a numerator this is going to be thrown arc from caster to target. I will add beam. 
In fact, I don't need to add beam. Um, because a beam... <laughs> a beam is just an arc with no curvature. Consider. Consider. Uh, spontaneous throne absorbed. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> Even nicer is having the internet back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then we can just add that to our SK magic. We can replace the Boolean with the, the enumerator. It's going to be an EN type. Skill animation type, that's the one. Effect system T. C. Effect system T, effect system C, so the target effect system and the caster effect system, and then we need the effects, the effect system. We'll just label them A, B, and C. Right? There's no need to complicate this stuff, right? So A is going to be the default one, right? Uh, and then B is going to be a second plume. Can't pass default value false for property particle animation type. Correct. That's a bit of a weird one. Um, but yeah, that's that is that that is done, and yeah, we can we can shut up shop for a day. Maybe we can see the particle effect happening on full screen. We'll just warn it more before we before we melt into playing video games on stream. Cast the fireball. Ooh. Broke it. Game content. Combat BP. Dummy classes. Broke it. Effect system A. Okay, we didn't break that. And then combat BP, skills, magic, damage, uh, fireball. Claire, welcome back. Effect system A did get scrubbed. So this is. Demo fire burst. Compile save. And then we have drink blood, which has effect system A blood fountain. Friendly name drink blood. Let's try that one more time. I'm a professional, I promise. Get the spells out, get the fireball out, get a nice angle because I haven't put the right particles on it for some strange reason. Skadoosh. And then, yeah, there you go. A little cloud of fire. 
rolls off, turn ends. And then we get Dracula, and Dracula has drink blood, which has populated nicely in the magic window. And that does a huge fountain of blood. <laughs> Technically should do no damage to the skeletons because they don't have blood, but uh, maybe he's just, maybe he's getting the marrow. We'll never know. Anyway. That's the do. That is the do, and that's how we do. And now we have a kind of a robust system that we'll probably have to rework eight times before release, but that's, that's no problem. It's no problem at all. Um, so yeah. Uh, yeah, so thanks, thanks everyone for coming to watch the development seg of today's stream. As of next week, I will be opening a second project in tandem with this project as well as a Sunday segment for asset creation, uh, which I may be spending on one of the projects or the other projects or both projects. Depends on how long I feel like I have on a Sunday after playing six hours of Fallout New Vegas. Uh, but that is what it is. And uh, yeah, so thanks for joining the seg.